My name is Mark uh, Knight, and uh, known as Monkey M. And uh, welcome to the PDC's uh, blender full of monkeys. Uh, we've got eight monkeys currently up on screen, but in a in a very shortly, we're going to uh, cut that down to three monkeys who will be performing. So, uh, should we uh, do anything else? Anyone else like to introduce themselves? Nora, perhaps. Uh, good morning, Philadelphia. We are coming to you live from the south of France, and we are super excited to take part in the Free Fringe Festival. Um, and this is a play I wrote for the recent PDC Bake Off. It's called Walking Warm, and it has been directed by my friend and colleague, Kirsty Yule. Uh, before we begin, I just want to make a shout out to a, um, an organization that is helping artists at the moment in Philadelphia. Uh, it's called Theatre Philadelphia Emergency Relief, and you can make donations through PayPal if you feel so moved. It's a tough time for everyone, but uh, my heart go goes out to professional artists, especially at this moment. So without further ado, Kirsty Yule. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm just going to quickly introduce the actors uh, involved in Nora's piece of work, Walking Warm, that you're about to see. Uh, in the role of Rebecca, we have Christy Dufran. Hey, Christy. Uh, we have Charlotte. Uh, in the role of Charlotte, we have Anne Hannafin. And in the role of Sarah, Holly Monjan. Enjoy the show. This is Walking Warm. Chincoteague, Virginia. Three sisters sit outside a summer cottage, shucking corn in the, uh, in the early evening summer sun. It's Rebecca's summer home. Sarah the youngest, and Charlotte the middle child, are visiting from Illinois. Oh, this one's no good. Kernels are all dried up. Hand me another one, will you? Didn't get enough water. They need lots of water, you know. Corn. You know. Dangerous, too. What? Intersections, cornfields. You can't see the other cars coming. Well, you chose to live there. Who ever heard of Rhyme, Illinois? What sort of name is that, Rhyme, Illinois? Is Evanston any better? Sort of Chicago, but isn't. Biggest collection of Toby jugs in the country, if not the world. What is it with you and those things? What is a Toby jug? Mugs with a sitting figure you drink out of. Have they got one of Trump? Why? So you can kiss his ass? Charlotte, stop. Speaking of drinking, Chardonnay, anyone? No, too oaky. It tastes like I'm licking a tree. I like it. Me too. To each his own. And I didn't buy anything else. Sorry, Charlotte. I'll get something else on the next run. Here's to us. Together again. Oh, the sun's setting. It's still really hot, though. It's hitting us at such an odd angle. Move that umbrella over a bit, will you? Aren't you going to watch the sunset? I like looking east, especially at this time of day. I've never seen the point of staring at sunsets. It's the light on everything I like. Like there, look. The water, the light, the tall grasses on acetique. You can sometimes spot the ponies. Hmm. They've tons of celebrities. What? Toby Jugs, the collection in Evanston, the politicians, comedians. Not your favorite, though. Kathy Griffin is not my favorite comedian. <laughs> She's nasty. Stop, Sarah. We agreed. No one is allowed to call another woman nasty. Okay. okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Still. She is pretty nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, the corn out east? Yes, of course. In France, too? No, not really. It's catching on, though. But it's more food for pigs. Fattens you up, they say. Ça fait grossir. <laughs> food for lazy Americans. Now it's being turned into good old hand sanitizer. Ethanol everywhere. 
in France, they've been using all the excess wine to make it. Excess wine? <laughs> I know. Sounds like an oxymoron. But between the coronavirus and the Trump tariffs, the wine market's collapsed. Small vineyards are struggling to sell their wine in time to get their vats ready for the next harvest. That's sad. All that lovely wine. Hand sanitizer. Yep. Hard to believe. Hand sanitizer. It's like the masks, you know? I mean, who knows what to believe? Scientists, first they say that there's- oh, it's wounded. hard to believe there could be too much wine, unsold, undrunk, turned into hand sanitizer. Undrunk wine? No mm. chance of that here, not with the three of us, together, like old times. No Al-Anon meetings for us. No, no, no. QAnon? Huh? Al-Anon. Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. Oh, I thought you meant, I thought I heard you say. Um, uh, yeah, I know you did. Alcohol. I do try to watch it. I know it runs in the family. Did you know we had a horse thief in the family? There's a horse thief in every family. It's not bad. It's light on the tree bark. Like I always say, if you can't beat them, join them. Hewing on? No. <laughs> Alcoholics. You can't beat them, join them. Remember those crabs? Crabs? What crabs? Oh, yeah. Oh, you were too little to remember, Sarah. Charlotte and I had gone fishing for crabs out in Assateague. Where the ponies are. Yeah, back then you could get close enough to touch them. We were out all day. The ponies were glowing white, brown, warm in the sun when it was setting. Mom and Dad had no idea what we were up to. Just gave us a bucket when we asked for one. Oh, we wanted to surprise them. We brought the crabs home for dinner. But we forgot to leave water in the bucket. What happened? What do you think? They all died, of course. No need to get snippy. Snippy. Snippy crabs. <laughs> Oh, I can still hear them squealing. Oh, don't. It was horrible. I, I'm sorry you got stuck here, Bex. I, I hope you'll be back in time for classes to start, if they're starting. There are worse places to be stuck. I'm glad you both made it here. At least we're far away from the crowds. They'll open the borders soon. We have to get the economy going again, you know? Classes will start this fall. Yeah, but will France let you back in without a quarantine first? No idea. We'll see, won't we? It's like the whole world's on standby or something. I hear they're close to making a vaccine, but are they really safe, the vaccines? And masks, I don't think they really, that we really need to wear masks in the first place. Hey, I Bex, Bex, this is a super house. I can't believe you found a house so close to Assateague. You're so lucky to have it each summer. It's been, what, four years now? Yeah. And I still feel like I'm living an episode of Misty. The horse, remember? Misty of Chincoteague. I read it over and over again one summer. Brought it in that bookshop with the old soda fountain and the wooden Coke crates. You always had your nose in a book. Probably a good thing she's a teacher then. <laughs> Do you remember the house mom and dad rented one summer where we had to shower outside? Yes, I loved that one. Showering outside, naked, nothing better. Oh, I hated it. Too liberating. Stop. Hmm. Coming out here when we were young, we were so lucky. We didn't even realize it. We still don't. You're right. We're really fortunate. Seeing the ponies out there, that always reminds me of the Dylan Thomas poem. The one about the boy. Hmm. Fern Hill. I remember it. You read it out loud over and over again, at least like a hundred times. So it must have been something. Spellbound horses walking warm. Mm, so it must have been. After the birth of the simple light in the first spinning place, the spellbound horses walking warm out of the winning green stable onto the fields of praise. I don't know why they had to cancel the pony swim. Too many people. Can we still go see them? I've always wanted to touch one, but I've never had the chance. Yeah, 
We could bike out there tomorrow. There should be more ponies on the island this year, but you're not allowed to touch them. Oh, come on. No, really, Sarah, they're wild horses. What harm could one carrot do? For their protection and yours, there are rules. You have carrots in the bottom of your fridge. It's illegal to approach them or feed them. It's a national refuge. What possible harm could one carrot do? The ponies injure visitors every year. They're feral. <laughs> Wild. It should stay that way. It's a free country, Charlotte. If I want to risk giving a wild horse a carrot and having him bite me or something, I'll risk it. They can't make up rules like that. Sarah. Charlotte, don't bother. So who are you voting for? That's none of your business. I'm your sister. You keep cutting me off when I want to talk about things, things that matter to me, how I see things, but you're not even letting me talk. Sarah, if we go there, we're not coming back. Do you understand that? I can vote how I like, Charlotte. Yes, you can, and so can I. Separatists fought Union Brothers too once upon a time. And killed them over the right to have slaves. Most of the presidents on Mount Rushmore had slaves, and we carved their faces all over most, the- Most, two of the four. Why can't you check the facts of what you say before you say them? Why do you always have to keep cutting me off? Because what you say half the time is just, oh, I, I, I can't. Sarah, laws aren't always just, just because they're laws. Exactly. What's wrong with one little carrot? Charlotte? Mm, no, Rebecca. You can't sit here shucking corn in silence about it anymore. It's bad enough with the, the, the elephant and the Zoom every time we chat online, but now we're here all together and it has to be said. No great world conspiracy, Sarah. This is not an episode of the X-Files. It's not some aliens landing once again in Michigan, but nowhere else on the planet. It's not just happening in the United States of America and the whole world is in on it. There are real scientists working out there, trying their very human best, and real journalists trying to scoop each other to feed us the news we are all asking for. Updates day after day, hour after hour, which we barely even have time to read. So many people with access super scary fast to a great deal of information that isn't always accurate. Stuff most of us can't possibly understand. And we want it faster and faster and we're drowning. We're like those crabs, grasping and at each other, snapping and fighting and desperate. And there isn't any water in the bucket because whoever was in charge was human. I just forgot. Well, I still say that Kathy Griffin is nasty. Hand me another ear of corn, won't you? More Chardonnay, anyone? End of play. <laughs>